real rock star shit. That's what I remember. Boom, we robbed some shit, we passed. Ride for my motherfucking niggas and all that. It's Crips that seen BBD. Had the West Coast, then we got like the South, you know? And then I think New York was fucking with everything. They was fucking with the slang, like the butts, all everything going on. And just at that point, we had like the, like the whole country. Nothing is for cap, nothing for clout like these niggas, cuz nothing is for that. <laughs> this is the real legit stories. Ferrari cost 600,000, stop playing with me. Hunters with the blue faces, feeling nipsy. Louis V briefcases, getting tipsy. Keep it with me, it's a murder if a nigga tempt me. The streets talking, you niggas know what it do. With some money, I could never imagine you. I be ducked off, I ain't got nothing to prove. I'm in Malibu with a nigga fool. 400. Today is a very special episode. 10 year anniversary. My Crazy Life album. 10 year anniversary of the My Crazy Life album, YG. Time flying by, man. 10 years. Hey, 10 years is <laughs> lit. We taking shots. Where the shots at? For sure, man. But it, it would have been impossible to actually make this episode even happen without two integral pieces to making this thing come alive, sitting right next to you. Of course, we have Sycamore. Yes, sir. What's up? Terrace Martin. Hey. Two of the best of the best in the game. I'm talking about one of the best A&Rs. If you don't know them, Google it. Because this right here, we're talking about the best of the best. They don't do a bunch of interviews because their talent and their resumes speak for themselves. Terrence, Mark, come on, man. Two top, come on, man. 2023 run you had? Ridiculous, brother. All praises to the both of y'all and all y'all work. Great accomplishments. But today we're here to talk about that My Crazy Life. It's been 10 years. Time's flying by. I can't believe it. I just don't understand. It's amazing. It's sitting across from me. I'm proud of you, bro. It's all love. Good look. Got to start off with a toast. And it's cheers, guys. If y'all got water, got wine, tequila, whatever you got. I want to give a cheers, man, to creating one of the greatest West Coast masterpieces long-standing albums that's ever been done, honestly, because we got a few, but this is one of the best. Toast. Toast, toast cheers. Toast. And again, I want to make sure I get a clear understanding. There's no disrespect to the Snoops and the Dre's. Those are classic albums as well. But we talking about for, for our generation, like you guys put together something magical. I want to just start off by asking like, um, in this world where art goes unseen, a lot of times, especially special art. If it's not like microwave, special art goes unseen. The stuff that lasts forever goes unseen. So for us to praise this album and be like, YG still can tour no matter what, forever, for life. It's something you guys created. Bro, I just wanted to be the, the one to give you your flowers. Now, bring him his flowers. Oh. Oh, literal flowers. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, flowers, man. Love, it's love, Come it's on, love, man, for sure. Okay. Okay, okay, red roses. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Rose is a group of concrete. I ain't want the people to see it, but Oh, that's fine. Man, look, man, got your mm -hmm. vinyl. Five. If you already uh, got if you already got one. No, I don't got this. Oh, okay, man. It's I, I don't man. know how the fuck I don't got one of these. Sick, you got one of these? For sure. Oh yeah. For sure, I don't man. have one. I need one too. Oh yeah. Well, Gotta well, get we're gonna get you one, man, for sure. Yeah, Gotta I appreciate this. Oh yeah. God damn. Mm -hmm. this the whole book cut everything. Uh, no, fun. Jeez. No, good looking. <laughs> Look at the squabble, you in there squabbling. Look at the one you in there squabbling yeah, at the top. Yeah, I saw yeah. It. The track list, everything about this. Let's just start from the top of it first. How did you guys all come together to make this happen? I met Sycamore um, when I was signed at Def Jam, and Joey was um, running the company. He told me I, I need to work with Sycamore, and I was like, I don't know this nigga. Who the fuck is <laughs> Sycamore? He was like, I'm telling you, bro. Just li like link with him. So I ended up linking with him, you know what I'm saying, vibe. And you know, me and Sick grew to be, you know what I'm saying, a special combo, you know what I'm saying, with um, a great relationship, you know what I'm saying, we bros, full well. Terrence Martin, Terrence, I've been seeing your ass through LA for a long ass time and shit. We got a lot of like LA stories yeah. and shit, but you know, Terrence Martin been doing this you know what I'm saying? He been on the scene doing this shit since I was a young, you know what I'm saying, in diapers type shit. <laughs> um, I ran across Terrence 
in studio sessions, moving around outside at clubs and parties mm -hmm. and shit. And you know, when we was putting together the album, we was talking about doing music and shit for for like before the album. But when we was putting it like together the album, it was like mandatory that we had to have Terrence Martin a part of the album. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And Terrence came in like third quarter and helped us finish that bitch off strong. And he mm -hmm. did it. You know what I'm saying? He added his Terrence Martin shit to that motherfucker. But chill, though, that's my, that's my story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like for me, you know, this album really changed my life, you know, cause, you know, shout out to Joey Manda. He's the uh, head of Encore Recordings now. And he gave me an opportunity to go work at Def Jam. And I was like running around the streets for like four, four and a half years in between jobs. So I was just ready to go. And he was like, man, you know, I'm gonna sign you up, you're gonna work with three artists. You know, he said, you're gonna work with YG, Little Reese, and Little Dirt. <laughs> I was like, oh, you put me with all the gangsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was spending my time all between uh, LA and Chicago uh, just working. And, you know, I don't know if you guys, if you're watching this podcast, you understand what Pushes Inc. is. Boy. And for when I first started getting in the groove over there and started going to some sessions, YG, they had a house studio. Um, and, I think in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. And it was crazy. It was like, there was just sessions. It was liquor everywhere, girls everywhere. But the music was hard and it was working on uh, Just Read Up too. Mm. Yeah, and, um, fingers on that joint. Yeah. And everybody, when I got there, you know, Def Jam was a, a New York based company, like all the heads of Def Jam. So I was in LA and this is like pre like Spotify and everything. So they didn't really realize how much, how, how much Push Sync had it going in LA. So they was just thinking it was local, or it was just like, uh, you know, the song like Tooted and Booted. Mm. But it had so many records, you know what I mean? It's so like, like, bitches ain't shit, and everything was going on. They was working on uh, You Broke. I was like, oh, this is incredible. You know, like incredible. It's like the beginning of the mustard run. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going to sessions and just, you know, talking and me and, the, me and everybody over there. And then I think <clears throat> the thing that really sparked it was the song... Uh, I'm from I'm from Bompton. And uh me and YG were talking. And I like the song was on Just Read Up Too, right? Yeah. And I just told him, like, yo, that's my favorite song of yours because it's like a concept and it was like a fire beat. Like, you know what I mean? It was like a it was hard, but it was like a conceptual at yeah. the same time. But like, and I just thought that was incredible. And he was like, yo, that's my favorite song too on the project. And that was like the beginning of our bond, like creatively. Cause then we were like, why don't we make a whole project like that song and call the the album like I'm from Bompton, you know? And that was, right. and that's how it kind of, how it all started, uh, the the idea behind it. Thanks, thanks. That's the album definitely, My Crazy Life was, um, when we started My Crazy Life, it was, the the title was I'm from Bompton. Yeah, and that's a fact. I didn't know that. Yeah. Why, take more, watch I change the name. Well, before, but the name, we got a lot out of the name. So if you listen to the album, there's a lot of songs that came out that era, like uh, Bick and Back Being Bull. Mm -hmm. uh, YG actually recorded that in New York. And I remember like listening to the song, thought it was great, but I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> 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 so, cause that was, you know, he was like, nah, Bick and Back, we changed like the V's, you know, mm -hmm. and the C's. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And, you know, so we started getting some really good songs out of that era. Uh, records and we were really really working um on the project and I was we were just getting in the groove and we were recording out I think in Burbank actually you yeah, know we started in Burbank yeah so you know and this I was still younger in my A and R days so the session so I'm gonna put y'all in the mind of a YG session in like 2012 or 2013 like the session would start like around two o'clock or three o'clock it was be YG the engineer and one homie then another homie. Then around five o'clock, maybe like four or five homies get off work. So about seven, eight o'clock, the session would just kind of turn into a dice game, push ups, <laughs> uh, slap boxing, politics, jail calls. Like, you know what I mean? It would just be so much going on. So after about a few weeks of that, I was like, man, we got to get out of here because it's not, it's not, it's, we're not, it's not productive. Yeah, it's not. Because, you know, and YG would be, you know, and initially it would be like so productive, but then it would just get so distracting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, uh, we gotta go. And I came up with the idea of going to Atlanta 
I said, well, why don't we go to Atlanta and record? At the time, you know, YG was really cool with Young Jeezy. And I was like, why don't we go to Atlanta and we could record and really stay focused and, and make it work like that. And now that's when the project went to another level. But at that point, when we go into Atlanta, the project was still called I'm From Bompton. It's prize pick time. Yeah, it's prize pick time. It's time to let all that barbershop talk about sports go to the next level by making daily projections on any NBA or NFL game. Prize Picks is a skill-based fantasy game where all you have to do is just select more or less on the players that you love to watch. If you really think you're a hooper like my boy YG think he is. But you're really just sitting at home on the couch? Use Prize Picks. You can get an entry in like 60 seconds. All you gotta do is go over to prizepicks.com, use the promo code 400, and they will literally match you up to $100 on your first deposit. That means if you put 50, they giving you 50. If you put 100, they're giving you 100. It's really that easy. All you gotta do is go over to prizepicks.com or download the Prize Picks app, and make sure you use promo code 400. Let them know we sent you. Paris, can you tell us like what you feel like when, how did y'all all come together to make this project happen? Yeah, man, how can I condense this story? Because it's so personal, you know, when, it, you know, yeah, come on, show that. Come on, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to be right there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get that thing right. Yeah. Uh. Oh, let me not kick you. Damn, my nigga. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, but nah, uh, it's, you know, so I heard about YG on from two different, kind of sets of humans, you know what I'm saying? Like my first my first time here in the bottom, um, one of my mentors growing up in LA was a guy named uh, Tyrone Griffin. And he had a son named Ty to Ty Dop or something, right? Remember, remember meeting Ty when he was about uh, maybe maybe 12, 13 years old. We, he was playing bass with my friend Walter Millsack. We we did a wedding. We did Jay Brown's wedding. Wow. Over there with Jay Z, yeah, with Ty playing wow. bass as a kid, me on um, Walter Millsap, and so that's my first that's time crazy. meeting Ty. That's heavy. And Ty's father used to always say, "Man, my son, my son," because um, Ty's father used to work at Nadine's Music next door to Paramount Recording Studio, and Ty Dollar Sign's father is instrumental for selling all the baddest motherfuckers like Quick, Dre, Battle Cat, the they MPC sixty twos and MPC three thousands. And uh, my first drum machine, he like everybody first drum machine, like he, he he was the black dude that knew about endorsements and equipment all through the 80s and 90s. So everybody knew Ty's daddy. So fast forward, we get with, I'm, I'm always getting with Ty. Ty called me one day like, hey man, like bro, 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 you gotta come hear this new shit, bro. So I was like, what, what's going on? Anytime Ty call you for new music, you mm -hmm. you you have to go. He's a he's been the head of the gang since he was a little kid, straight straight up. I, I don't know how he got that shit, but he's just always ahead of everyone. Always, he's always a leader of a thing. So he calls me over and he plays me all this music. I think it's like at this. I think his grandfather had a house in Baldwin Hills or something like that. In the mm -hmm. Yeah, in the Don. Mm -hmm. So I pull up over there. And I hear this music, and he, 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 now this is Ty, the musician, the singer. Yeah. You know, so he played me this music, and I listened to everything, and I remember he turned it off. He said, bro, that's the new shit. I remember looking at him and saying, what the fuck was that you playing me, bro? <laughs> what that, what the, who, who was talking like, this is crazy, bro. Listen to the, what, the, 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 this is. What, what what are you, who are these people around you, bro? What the fuck is going on, dog? He said, no, bro. He knew. This is the sound, bro. <laughs> this is the sound, bro. All the shit you do, old nigga shit, bro. This is the sound, bro. And I was like, whatever. Right. So, going by my way, at the time I'm hearing about this, I, I, I think I'm staying, uh, I'm staying, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in LA, I'm staying at my brother's place, which is like, Buckingham and at, you know I'm 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 painting the picture like I'm staying in a place to where it's not many musicians and artists at where I'm staying at off Crenshaw. 
So, but and then I'm hearing this other thing. All these man, you know why she is, man. Got the party, the hooty whoop, and I went to one of his things, man. And yeah, he had homies on the West Boulevard, the thirties, the sixties, the eight trays, woo woo, and everybody was man cool. And then, man, they was they they were just pushing this this pushing ink thing. So then now I'm hearing it from a street aspect. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing it from a crew of my homeboys that ain't got nothing. I think these niggas on the run for hot ones, at least four of them was for sure at for this sure. time. <laughs> for sure. Like, I'm not even... I wish That's I could LA. be lying That's about LA. this shit. Yeah. It's L.A., but it's my L.A. a little different. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's different. So it's like, it's, it's the ones that are specialists at what they do, mm -hmm. paying attention to the movement. But it's like... But I'm not hearing... I'm, I'm hearing everything I'm hearing is like this dude is like bringing street shit together. Like the uh, the last person I heard that was bringing Bloods and Crips together on this level was like Suge mm -hmm. in the '90s. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, you know he was hiring Bloods and Crips all through LA and all the musicians. Real talk, I can I can never not leave that out with Suge. So that's the last time I heard of these things moving together. Mm -hmm. From there, you know, LA has been very chaotic with all the young shit and everybody going on and why and just a lot of different things going on in these neighborhoods. So I'm hearing about this guy that's bringing all these people that we were taught to hate each other together just to push a line. And they, it's at parties. It ain't that it ain't that functions where they lining up to go bust. It's like right. we coming have a good time, nigga. We getting on some bitches and we just having good first instinct, very high level expression music. Very high level expression with a big turnout in it. Oh, oh. So I'm hearing this thing bubble all through the gram. Keep in mind, I don't even know what he looked like yet. But when I'm hearing about his name, I'm hearing Ty. I'm like, this nigga gotta be six foot eight. Like, just, <laughs> just, I'm just, just cause, big dude. Cause, uh. Cause the power that this human possesses in South Central and Compton and, and Watts and Long Beach and Cerritos and Bell, I mean, all these places. Oh, you sorry. can't count out no place in LA, <laughs> period. And this dude, was the only dude I heard in my fucking life to have a line. Like, really could go anywhere. Not because on some, on some like, nigga, he going to bring the party. Mm -hmm. But he not going to turn down. He ain't no buster. That's, that's important for man. me. That, that's important for me to fuck with people that's solid, that stand their ground, whatever they believe in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I had heard a lot, of, a lot of altercations go on where, you know, he... he you know, niggas thought he was going to be a victim, but he ended up being the victim. So I heard all these little street things, and I love that. I love, especially in LA, I, I love one that, because this city kind of city, if you if you a piece of meat, <laughs> boy, your best friend going to eat you. Or I'm from, where I come from, you know what I'm saying? So I heard about all these things. So then I went back to Ty and said, hey, play that music again. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> so now I'm listening to the music, I'm like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing about shootouts, but for having a good time, no. Right. Just trying to get out the spot. I'm hearing about the nigga mama. And I'm hearing about all kind of just, all, I'm like, I love this nigga. Who is this nigga, dog? Dude, it's YG, I told you. <laughs> God. And then Tooted and Buddha came out for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and then, then Tooted and Buddha, but I remember... I remember before Mustard even did. I remember going to their show that Snoop came to at the Key Club. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I remember, like, even before that, that I remember going, talking to Mustard that night, like, bro, nigga, you, nigga, you got to do it. I'm like, Swiss Beats, nigga. You know, but I, that's me. I'm probably getting fucked up, faded, mm -hmm. just around. And I remember that night was deep because I'd never been to a YG show. But now I had been bumping into him in the streets. I'm like, what's up, my nigga? You know, I had some friends that liked him, didn't like him. So I, I, that's important because I know all the angles now. Mm -hmm. So now I know he's solid, right? So I'm seeing it and I'm going into this function. But now this function in Hollywood is not like a concert. This is for sure probably like the biggest unified gang meeting I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this is like a real every hood that you would think hate each other in one place dancing. Bitches ain't shit Snoop come out. <laughs> it's like, it's, and I'm looking at the power of like, and I'm older, you know, so I'm like, oh, this is the new LA. This is the new LA. Because with Snoop and them, all the records I did, I was the baby with them. But with these guys, I'm, I'm like seven to eight years older than them. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, this is shit. And Snoop was, I was loving how Snoop was embracing me. Because that's really my homeboy. 
like on some personal shit. Like mm-hmm. it, it was at that at that point, even still, but at that point, if he wasn't embracing or fucking with, I, I probably wasn't moving neither. Cause I really love Snoop. You know what I'm saying? So just hearing about him on a human being aspect and the music aspect is why I I, I feel like, you know, like b- by the time I got to the record, it was just it was like I met, I finally was in the studio with my little cousin. Like, I finally, it's him, Mustard, and then Sick, I, you know, this, this this is our 20th year knowing each other. I remember Sick as a kid running around New York with True Life. But no, before that, in Snoop's living room oh, yeah, with a hundred crimps. About straight that. up. <laughs> in Diamond Bar. Because I was there. Oh, yeah. I was there, and, yeah. and I remember Sycamore is a big instrumental to why I got known around the West Coast because at the time, I just had beat CDs in my back pocket for Snoop. I was just playing saxophone and keyboard, waiting for him to say, anybody got beats? Just waiting, waiting. And at the time, everybody was getting money with Snoop. So Snoop, I started doing these mixtapes. Sycamore turned them on to, this is what's going on. I remember the conversation like, hey, this is what's going on. And we was going back and forth to New York, really fucking with Sick, getting, getting ganged mm-hmm. from Sick. It was you and, and another dude from New York. But you, you stay the other nigga got, we, we, just, <laughs> we put that nigga out. Okay, well, you, mm-hmm. you, stay, you made it through, because a real one. But Sick was always turning on Snoop the game, and I, I happened to be always right there. So I'm saying, hey, Sick, Snoop trust him. This is before, he probably in high, junior high school at the time mm-hmm. I'm talking about. And then I'm seeing that, but Sick, and these mixtapes, mixtapes from the West Coast was not a thing. So getting producers to do beats for mixtapes and not paying them is mm-hmm. not our culture. No. But I'm trying to get on. So I remember Snoop was like, man, I need some beats. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> now, the one year sitting here watching Kobe Bryant dominate basketball and Snoop watching basketball every day, I'm laughing at every joke. He finally asked for the beats. <laughs> <laughs> He, and I remember he said, man, 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 I can have these beats. I'm like, yeah, you can have these beats. He said, I could do anything with these beats. If this was my first contract. I said, yeah, do anything. He said, cool. Welcome to the church albums. Every, every welcome to the church album, at least five, six, seven of Terrence Martin songs. And he said my name. Every mixtape, every mixtape, every mixtape. That's how I built my trust with Snoop. Because I never tripped on business. I was just happy to do music with him. But it was through Sycamore's mixtape. So fast forward years later. He, I'm like, oh, this is, this is a no-brainer. I know what this guy does. Before he was even in, in the form of a, a, a building, I know what this human does. Mm-hmm. He makes some out of nothing. And I know what this guy does, you know. I mean, at the time, this was only my second time doing an album. My, my first time somebody trusted me with a full body of work was like right before this with Good Kid Man City. So I was just coming off my first kind of, I've done, I've done this before, boom, and it happened to be my crazy life. Wow. Fire. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I forgot all about that. Fire. That, uh, no, nothing is, like full nothing is for cap, nothing for clout like these niggas, cuz <laughs> nothing is for that. This is the real, legit stories. Hearing it make it sound full circle. Snoop, Cosign, boom, came, sick, mixtape. It make it, it's like it's supposed to happen. The universe work like that. Right. The universe works just like that. I know it's been 10 plus years, but do you remember the first night in the studio together? First night? Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I remember the first night when you was in the studio. You spoke mm-hmm. on it. It's when we was doing Just Read Up 2. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was recording at that spot. It was on like Hollywood Boulevard. Mm-hmm. No, we had the house shit, but then we had the studio right. joint. And then you feel me? You would come, sick of come to the studio. And before we like, you know what I'm saying, we was getting to know each other, like he'd just post on the wall and just watch like everything happen. Like he was doing that for like a month or two. Yeah. And Cause then, it, um, it was a lot happening. Cause like, <laughs> like, like what like uh what, what Tara said, it was it was a freak. You remember, cause I'm coming from New York, so I'm thinking like everything's like boys in the hood, like it's like bloods and crips, like everything. But this is the first time I'm like, oh, they all friends. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like Got one one friend, you know. You got uh, he from like Long Beach, you know. You got somebody. You got a bunch of people from South Central. You got a bunch of people from Compton. Mm-hmm. You got people from all over, Bloods, Crips, just all hanging out, all at the same spot. And I was just like, oh, okay, I'm. 
and I'm I'm taking this time just to really understand the culture, understand like what's going on, going to events, going to like in stores, and just really understanding it. Because before you could just jump to things and have an opinion, you need to understand what's going on, especially when it's working. Mm-hmm. You know, like they they were already successful with Pusha Zinc. I I was just there to help let the label understand what was going on. That was really my my focus. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I was going around with them, going around LA. Like, I was all the way in there. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was in a slammer at the time, but I would have probably been there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wherever, wherever they'd go, I would go. You know what I'm saying? Because I was all the way in. And um, by the time we got to Atlanta, uh, we came up with a game plan. And then it became like a program. And it was like, all right, well, we stayed like in a corporate apartment. You know, I was on one floor. I might have been like on the second floor, YG on the fourth, or vice versa. And... We said we was going to go to the studio Monday through Thursday, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was like, all right, we got the time off to go live life, go do shows, go do whatever. And we did that for eight weeks, you know, and then everybody else would kind of come through. And Terrace came uh, came uh, for like a month. And Terrace was smoking hot off a of good kid in Mad City, like he said. And that was like one of the biggest albums out at the time. Because I was like 11 or 12, 2011. Yeah. yeah. And then I was just like, all right, we wanted to make an album like that, but we wanted it to be like the inverse. You know, like Ken- Kendrick was the kid looking outside. You know, Waji was the kid outside he was looking at, you know, and, and it was going to be like a 24 hours in the life of that kid, you know. So it all, that's why it all kind of tied together because we were telling a different kind of story. And then, of course, having Mustard there and Ty there and just having multiple rooms going on at the same time, it, it was just, we were, and remember, we're still making I'm From Bompton at the time. We didn't even get to my crazy life. So it was just like a mush is in a room. He's over there making beats. T got his equipment's going on. Ty's in another room. And then a little bit out of Atlanta coming through, like somebody like a rich homie Quan just coming through that. Uh, and a shout out to Young Jeezy. Shout out mm-hmm. to uh, Carbon 15. You know, they were like yeah. really holding us down in Atlanta musically and just with everything. And Thanks. Jeezy was in the studio like a lot. He would probably come like, Two, right. two or three sessions and right. really being there on his uh, on his executive shit. Yeah, you know? facts, facts. It, yeah. it was it was really dope to you know, and this is Jeezy Jeezy at the time. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Jeezy was hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jeezy he was. was hot. That nigga that had was records. One on one, everything. <laughs> yeah, bangers. that nigga. Yeah, yeah that nigga yeah, was hot. And he so. and he was really like he was really fucking with the West Coast because like I got like R.I.P. out. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So he was like it was like a balance, and he would just he wouldn't tell us what to do. He would just kind of like push us and. In different directions. Hey, well, it's crazy. You remember? Um, so, Jeezy had put out a, a mixtape. I remember that. In like May of 2023, and yeah, you know I'm saying he put the my nigga song on a mixtape. Uh, but he was telling me like, like I should put this song out before the album. And I'm like, nah, I want to keep this for the album. Like he like, bro, I'm telling you, put this shit out. I mm-hmm. I was like, nah. <laughs> You feel me? He dropped the mixtape. That nigga put that shit on that mixtape, nigga. <laughs> I was mad as shit, nigga. But then that motherfucker just, mm-hmm. and then he was like, "See, I told you, nigga. <laughs> I told you. I said, yeah, you right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, the game. That nigga did that. It started going up on Vine. Like, yeah. It was just, it was crazy. Then, and that's at the time, like the label didn't understand what we was doing. They thought we were just gonna give him like a West Coast album and call it a day. <laughs> and when the song started going up at Vine, everything started to change. That's when the phone calls started coming in. Yeah. I bet, I bet yeah. they was calling. Yeah, yeah, that shit right there. That shit was crazy. Hey, another thing I wanted to uh, say, like you know, what I'm saying, like with Sycamore, like working with um, Sycamore, you know, like being in a studio with bro. Being an artist and have somebody like this as your A&R, you know what I'm saying? It's like cheat code, like, cause like how he do shit, how he work, you know what I'm saying? Is is like, it set the bar for like a and like too high for me. Cause like now when I'm working with other a and like I just be like, no disrespect. I'm just like, you not a real A&R, bro. <laughs> like, not to cut you off, YG, but what is? Can I explain to the people like what is an A&R? I don't think like people need a- to know. A&R is basically like it's artists and repertoire, and they're the relationship between the artists and the label. So you got to balance like two things. You got to balance getting the best possible album out, mm-hmm. you know, and then you also got to balance out making sure it performs and making sure like it's un- under budget, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
for me, my strategy, mm-hmm. my strategy is always twofold. Like I was like, how much money we got? All right, let me just be as creative with it as possible so we can just get the best art out. I always want to make classics. Everything I want to be a part of is like a classic. Mm-hmm. And at that time, you know, I didn't really have like a name like that. And I think one thing that YG, Mustard, Cheesy, Terrors did was build up like my, my confidence. You know, like I'll be in the studio having ideas and then they would be like, nah, nah, like tell your idea. Like, you know what I mean? Like, nah, like go for it. Like they always like defend my <laughs> ideas. Cause sometimes people bring, you know, it's a lot of people in the room. It's an, it's an intimidating room. Of course. Cause you know, the homies that they got flights, you know, so they'll come out there and it's like 15 people and everybody got an opinion. And they're like, nah, I trust it. And after a while you saw people really trusting it. And I think like, um, I think the point where I think my confidence started going really through the roof was like, when Jeezy was like, nah, you got it. Like, you know, we, we following you, but what are we doing today? And he would just give me tips. He'd be like, yo, just make sure somebody, just make sure YG worked on an older record at the beginning and before he starts new stuff and da 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 da. And it, it was just an overall experience. And from that project, it's every all my success to me and my confidence, I wrote off that project up to today. You know, and I, now when I started walking in a room, I started walking in a room with a lot more confidence. You know, because of those sessions. Terrence, your first night in the studio listening to My Crazy Life, you remember it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I, uh, Sycamore called me. I was in New York. I was I was in New York. And, you know, I was I was I was fucked up then though, because I, I was in New York. I had just lost my first crib. I was in a bad publishing deal. I was in suspension. Uh the the uh, Kendrick Kyle Matt came, but that shit it nut the I haven't reaped the benefits yet at this time. It just was out, you know. So I just lost the crib. I remember how that felt. Lost the, I had no money. But I always know for some reason, like when I get money, I just got to go to New York. I just, like, Pete, they, that culture really takes care of me. The New York really, since I was a kid with my father going up in Harlem on, like, 127th and 2nd, the, 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 just the new, just the gravel, the... The electricity in New York always makes me feel I could create, I could just make a way. So I got broke, I got fucked up. I had like a thousand dollars. I went to New York, right? <laughs> I told my publishing company I'm working with Kendrick. I always said that back then, so they could pay for the hotel. They said, "Well, how long you gonna work for Kendrick?" I said, uh, "Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, 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 how, how long you need me for?" <laughs> I'm at somebody's house. <laughs> he like thirty days, like, like thirty days. So I always chose the Hudson Hotel back then because I used to go on tour a lot with Snoop and stay at the Hudson Hotel. So I know if I didn't have no money, I could always go downstairs and eat and bill it to a room because I knew how the rooms work. Yeah. Yeah. And one, 104, 330, Suite 12. I knew how all the rooms work. So I would like, and I knew, you know, I just, you know, so I would, I knew I could stay in New York at the Hudson Hotel. Thing on the, uh, Hudson used to be on 59th and 8th Ave. Yep. 59th and 8th. Cross street from the Lincoln Center. Mm-hmm. So I knew I could stay over there at the Hudson. I could eat free every night, one meal, because I can't do the lick all day. Mm-hmm. And I just was in New York doing nothing, just waiting for the electricity to hit. <laughs> <laughs> and crazy. it hit. He called. Mm-hmm. He called to work with a West Coast artist, because I was like, maybe I'll go to New York. And A, I played a saxophone, so I could, I, I could, I could send my kids a little money back if I play play the horn every night in New York. Mm-hmm. Go down to the, I play. I could go. Keep you know what I'm saying? Let me just keep going because in L. A. At the time for me, L. A. was just it was just drunk. It was just like damn. Man. It hadn't. It was a whole new movement coming with a whole new sound. Right. I had just got great at the old sound. I just got great when the sound went whoa, and then went boom. So I but I had enough sense to be like well. I, I better get with them mm-hmm. yeah. quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. he called me. I was, I never forget, man. I was probably, I was in New York. He called my phone, like, hey man, we in Atlanta, blah, 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 blah. He gave me this whole spiel, blah, blah, blah. How soon you ready to fly? I think I told that motherfucker, like, uh, maybe 2 p.m. today. <laughs> I said some shit like the next one going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. you know, I said, you know, uh, maybe 2 p.m. I think at that one, I probably had $200 in my pocket. I was like, shit, well, let me get to New York. I mean, let me get to Atlanta. He flew me out to Atlanta. One thing about me, I don't care, unfortunately. Now, now I respect money now because I'm a different thing now. But at this time, I, I, I grew up a real artist. Like, I don't do this for the money at all. At this time, unfortunately, I didn't because I was just living. Fucked but up. Fucked up. I was fucked up, right? But I didn't mind being fucked up at the same time because I don't like being told what to do or control. 
So my shit be a little different. So when I went down there to Atlanta, I already knew when I got on the plane, I told myself, don't come with no old ideas, nigga. Nigga, just nigga. Nigga, sit, sit next to YG, nigga, sit next to sick. Listen to what they listen to, nigga. Look how they walk. Look how they talk. Shut the fuck up. This is a new sound. You don't know shit about these niggas' sound. You like them, but you don't know shit, but you don't know where to put these that mustard is now you don't know nothing so shut the fuck up and listen and you're gonna learn just be a sponge nigga be thankful that these young niggas fucking with you because you broke as fuck <laughs> nigga this is me talking to myself yourself, get, get yourself <laughs> ready and i say myself you're right man i'm gonna shut up and pull up so when i went to atlanta i did that i had him order one keyboard no boy i said it i found out i seen where he was sitting he used to sit up how patchwork is he used to Lift himself up and sit up on the thing and kind of listen to the music. I said, okay, I'm going to put the keyboard to this side. I'm going to be just as close as I can to the artist and just look. Because you know what an artist like him, they'll tell you what to play and what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your job is to put the sheen on the idea. He tell you like, well, you know, but then sick is like, yeah. Then. So it's just like, man, that was more for me. It was like a paid learning experience for me. Because I was still, I was relearning music. I was relearning music. You know, the Kendrick music is completely different than the YG you music. You fit perfectly with Kendrick. It, yeah. This was, that was, this was a new sound. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was completely new, you know? And when you dig into that story, you know, really, I remember him coming by the Top Dog stuff in Carson before a lot of things. Anybody heard of a lot of things. So it was just like everything stayed connected. That's, that, was my comp, that was my comfortability with being at them sessions, like, you know, because it was hard. It was hard as a man at that time, especially at that age. I had no money, no home back home. So I said, man, I hope these niggas keep me out here for a long time. Because <laughs> now I can't go back and get the hotel lick in New York because oh, I'm yeah. gone. <laughs> I done checked out. I can't read. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the best thing I did was just get on that plane, go to New York. Me and Mustard stay in the same hotel. We hop in the car, come to, watch, come to the studio, patch park. YG come in and out, right, right, be really in tune. Some nights you got to go to the club. I think you had your Porsche out there at the time, mm -hmm. moving around. Yeah, with the blick in that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he had these, these, these amazing pants on, yeah. right? <laughs> but I looked at him, I, man, I, I remember me just saying, that has to be uncomfortable to carry yeah, that. to carry that with them on. on. <laughs> but, he's, but he's doing it. It's amazing how he's doing this. He's dancing. He's happy. It's, like, it's amazing. So it's amazing, right? But the whole session was really like that. It was more of a learning. I didn't, even hearing him talk, it's interesting that it was just like everybody was to be kind of pros. I think the biggest ego in the room ended up being the music. Mm -hmm. Everybody got their own. I had my, but I think everybody was like, we don't give a fuck. We got to make sure this body of work is just like, you know. And at that time, I was like, I was already like getting, I was just getting excited because the Good Kid Mad City thing had started being talked about. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. When it's gonna kick in though, when I can start, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so but when I start getting over here, I said, I knew, I said, oh my God, I'm about to be coming off two of culture shifting artists from Compton. What? I, I, I used to wanna be from Compton as a kid. I used to hate I was from South Central when Easy came out, because I wanted to be Eric Easy E. <laughs> right. So, so, so when I made good grades, my mom would drive me every Friday to the Compton sign and just let me sit there and look at it. <laughs> I told Dr. Dre and Snoop I was built to work with them. Hell yeah. So when these guys came along, I was like, I know it's, I said that shit, but it's, it's coming really, together. It's coming together. And that, you know, YG and Kendrick, hands down, literally, like, I, I made a joke with Punch. I invited Punch to my crib. I'm like, yo, man, you should come to my crib. And I'm literally, like, it's nice to have a house where, like, you could see all your friends help pay for it. <laughs> the floor, exactly. the yard, the stairs, <laughs> the stove. But you know, like my 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 success and my finances, whether it's from YG to Kendrick to Thundercat to Kamasi, are one hundred percent personal to Sycamore. I don't have no industry friends. I I haven't made a dollar off any new. I'm my whole success. My children's going to college. My mom's paying off for how everything. Me seeing my first two, three, four, five million is strictly off of my friends. Hard, mm -hmm. uh, real, no lie. I think I think our bond in the studio was one th thing. All three of us had in common was we like to drink. 
<laughs> you know, so. <laughs> Woo, <shit. laughs> what? So I'm glad them sessions started like at 6 p.m. because <laughs> I, 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 was, I think I was more on like tequila. I think. Uh, you was like Hennessy, right? I was whatever the party got started. With. <laughs> Man, what? Well, gee, is always a pouring shot. So that was that was like a big part of our, our our situation. And I think that T, what he did was really raise the level of musicality and professionalism in the room. Like he would not, he would do more than just play on the records. He would give us hints. He would give us references to back in the day. Like he would just be like a real coach in there, you know, just making sure the musicality of the of the records went all the way up. You know what I'm saying? Like he was playing at one point. He played, told him we want a song like Dear Mama. He played it backwards. Oh, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's some real genius level shit. Yeah, you <laughs> did do that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We had a good time. Yeah, oh, and that was probably the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> can you describe that? Can you describe exactly what it is you do? Like when you place in mute, I do. I don't think people understand. Like, what does that mean? Placing instruments on songs. Like, what does that what does that mean? Oh, I mean, you know, just just. Uh, uh, the most easiest way I, I can say it is, you know, you, it, it's pianos, bass, strings, guitars, horns, those things on 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 top of the music. You know yeah, what I'm so saying? so so you know, what I'm saying the music that we was making, like mustard, you know, and all that, like the sounds is is coming through the computer. It's called analog sounds, or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So the the instruments is not like like real live instruments. You know what I'm saying? They coming through the computer, analog. So what Terrence Martin do, he come and play. Well, digital, yeah. So the computer digital not coming analog. That's oh, it. shit. Yeah, Fuck. Yeah. I fucked up. But yeah, you That's know what, what I'm do. saying? Yeah, now it's all good. But the fucking, the instruments, like the music, must have to make the beat with is digital. And Terrence come through with the real shit, the analog shit, and it takes the, it elevates, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole feeling and sound of the song, you know? Textures change when it's real. Yeah, it's, it's a very particular skill that I that I learned from Battle Cat and DJ Quick, hands on. Like I lived with Battle Cat as a teenager, you know, for you lived with him, you know. Slept on his floor. I spent countless hours asking David Blake about signal flow and gang staging and Poltex and 60 cycles, 30 cycles and different layers. I spent, my my whole life is like, I spent hours studying these guys. So when I got to this guy's record, I was finally able to use all these things. Like I remember seeing DJ Quick always gave references to his records. Oh yeah, and you know, you know what I'm saying? So, I finally got a chance to use all that stuff on with with on on this record. That's that's really all that was. And you gotta understand with Terrace, he he is part of a lineage. You know, if you look at somebody like a Quincy Jones or a Herbie Hancock, he's the one who like passes the torch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And whoever he decides to pass the torch to, that's what's gonna keep the musicality going. It's like it don't get as it don't get more pure than T, you know what I mean? And everybody he works with. So you taking that level of like of like raw Poetry and stuff that uh, 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 YG is giving, right? And it's real energy. You're giving mustard with such an innovative sound, or taking that Bay Area sound and taking it to a whole nother level. And you got somebody like a T bringing in that level of the Quincy Jones level of musicality and bringing it to the record. Like you go and make a classic, you know. And then we're not think about like making a classic. We just make we want to make sure we make mm -hmm. the vision of having like that album that comes out perfectly. You know, like we did, we had an idea in our head that we all shared, that everybody understood what the mission was, and everyone was trying to contribute. You know, I think um, one of my favorite songs that got made. I mean, like I want to talk a little bit about uh, mustard, right? And just like, like, like the song BPT. That's one of the best beats I, I've ever heard in my life. Like that song yeah. was incredible, and the song was going. I don't remember if you had the hook first. Did you have the hook first of that one? Yeah, I had the hook first. Yeah, the, the hook, hook first. first. Yeah, the hook and the hook. And that happened when I wasn't even around. He just did that hook and I was just like, oh my God, I sound like some Dr. Dre shit. And you can hear uh, T on there like, P, P, T underneath there is just kind of elevating that sound. You yeah, know what I'm saying? We, we was on that. We was on. See, we now was that on. you did that with your hands? You hear yeah. it. <laughs> that, now yeah. I can hear it. Yeah. 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 But when you get see it in the studio, <laughs> and you know, we talking about, it's, you know what I mean? It's like these real dudes in the studio, it's like, it make you play those sounds and make them react. Like that yeah. song that, you know, that that song, that's, that is one of the hands down, probably to me, 
Snoop Pimp Slide. That's one of the top three most hardest songs in West Coast history to me. That shit bang crazy. I'm talking about aggressive and attitude, like straight up. You feel me? That's like that song spells out what this shit is about to the fullest. That it just so you want to make that like a like a ghetto play. Yeah. Hell yeah. I remember yeah. I, I was talking to YG about it. I was like, he was saying, what should I do in the verse? I was like, you, so no one's ever talked about like getting jumped in. Damn. <laughs> that's the type of shit he that's do in the studio. Is that that's how that happened? Happen? That's how he, yeah. Is that how that happened? Yeah, bro. Oh, that's how a lot of, that's how a lot that's of the, crazy. that's how a lot of the songs on the album happen. I come to sick like, all right, like, where should I take this shit? Like, you feel me? He'd be like, you should rap third person on this song. You should do this on this song. You should. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Different. It, 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 now it was so much fun though, because at that, that point we were so locked in. It was like we we're like the same brain at that point. I was just like, he, YG would just nail it because it would be so many different spaces. So the studio have like a studio over here, a studio over there, like a room where you just play pool. And YG would like playing pool upstairs. So like my job was just like, I was like the director of creativity. I was just like, I knew YG was up there writing. I made sure nobody goes in that room. Yep. I don't care if he's in there for two, three hours, he's writing, don't bother him have some laid all the way out. And it would just be having different creative people come in and out. I remember one time speaking of incredible beats, Atlanta is like, it's like the, it's like the 24 hour fitness of producers. Mm -hmm. Like there's nonstop producers coming all the time. There'll be producers sitting there for four or five hours waiting to play their beats. You know right. what I'm saying? You can have 11 producers pull up every night if you wanted to, 11 different producers. It's a crazy place. Like on the album, the song 1AM was produced by Metro Boomin. You know what I'm saying? I was like, before. And fucking Metro used to be in the studio every day. He used to just be up in there posting. And that, and he listened to a song like 1AM. That's like no Metro song you ever heard. You know, this is a song yeah. where he, he made a West Coast beat just to yeah. show the level of talent that he had and the level of talent we had in the room. I remember one night, because we had Mustard out there and Mustard was like in a small room over there. And I don't know, I don't remember if he didn't like being in a small room, but he was just had a... He was not feeling it one day. And there was a lot of producers playing beats and he kept going in and out. And then he just got so mad. He just went in the room and after like an hour, hour and a half, he just came back in the room. He just dropped his laptop. Didn't say nothing to nobody. Took the aux and then played uh, the beat for Who Do You Love? Who do you love, yeah. And it was just like, oh, I thought the world was gonna end when he played that beat. <laughs> and he, he still ain't saying nothing after he played the beat. He was just looking around, like he ain't crack a smile. <laughs> he ain't do nothing. Yeah. He was just showing like, nah, yeah. like I don't know, you keep getting all these niggas, like you need yeah. other people besides me. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? That's what I want to ask y'all. Like, how, how did you make that mesh with must have been like the lead producer on the album? How did you make it mesh? You got Metro, 808, you got all these people coming in. How did you make it all like cohesive? Like, hey, mustard. I mean, mustard was always the he's also always going to be the baseline of it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mustard at the end of the day, if mustard wants something, mustard's going to get it. You know what I mean? Must if it's like the Lakers, like it's like Kobe and Shaq, and he's like Shaq. You know what I'm saying? But there's other people who are part of an album, and I think like T, he would just come on and add and bring the musicality and and get in where he fit in, just to make sure it all the way worked. Mm -hmm. And then I think that mustard really enjoyed working with Terrace because he would make his beats even Hello, better. Yeah. And then Jeezy would come and add his two cents to it and add mm -hmm. things on. One of the things that Jeezy did that was brilliant, because I remember you asked it at the beginning, we had reached like um, our, like a, a creative block at one point. And we got all these great songs, like 1AM and Picking Back Being Bull. I think it maybe even BPT from, uh, I'm from Bompton. And then uh, I think, I think it was Jeezy, right? Who came up with the concept of calling the album My Crazy Life, or you had that name? No, I had that name. Like, I had that name, but I wasn't really sure about it because of the My Crazy Life shit. It's like, it come from the Hispanic culture. Yeah. You feel me? The, you feel me? The dot, dot, dot. You feel me? That's where that name come from culturally. So, like, when I had thought about it, I was like, I don't know if I want to do that because motherfuckers might be like, why are you calling your album that? that? You know what I'm saying? That's some Mexican shit or something. Right. So I ain't want to bring it up. But I remember when that, the whole I'm from Bompton conversation came up. Like it was just like, like, like I think it was Jeezy who was like, uh, like, like everybody is not from Bompton though. So right. you feel me? Like I'm leaving people out. I'm not including, you know what I'm saying? I'm not including people. Mm -hmm. Like with that type of title. Mm -hmm. 
And Jeezy, Jeezy was like, you should come up with another title. And YG came up with the, the album My Crazy Life. And that just opened up almost like the second half of the album. Because then My Crazy Life was like, oh, we could do more day in the life shit. You know, so I think that's when he, one of the first songs he came up with the new open concept was like, uh, Meet the Flockers. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was like a, you know, because that was another thing that I was just like, I just thought that was like, that was before like home invasions became like a big mm-hmm. thing. Because everything to me from New York was just brand new from the words to the slang, you know what I mean? And they would talk about flocking. That's B&E over there. Yeah. That, B&E game over there. But everybody in the, in the room would just be like, it was regular, you know? <laughs> so, so, but I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm telling them like, nobody knows what this stuff is like outside of this room, outside of the culture. So when you did a song like Meet the Flockers, I think the song I like meet the flockers, it was like, I think it was like uh it was like really groundbreaking. And I know they tried to cancel that song. <laughs> <laughs> tried to, I think they did. Yeah, the other day. But you know what I'm saying? I think that the song came from a real place. Mm-hmm. And I, I I definitely disagree with it because, you know, that's just what somebody was going through at that at that time. You know, it's no different than a movie, you know, right. and that's something that, you know, something that YG's always gonna wear on the chin, even like Song that's not on that album was on his next album. Uh, Fuck Donald Trump, you know, had, mm-hmm. you know, the Secret Service and and the, and the White House reaching out about the song and try to to get it edited, you know. And um, but that's how you know, like you're making a difference and you're making you're making um, you hitting a nerve, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that after switching the concept to my Crazy life, it just the floodgates just kind of like opened up, you know. And that's when we were like, oh yeah, like we really rocking because we out there for eight weeks, man. He was out there for a long time. I see that um, Jeezy was a, um, a, a pivotal piece to this. He's coming in every other day, hey man, you should do this, change the name to this. Did he play a big role in the rollout for my nigga? Yeah, remember, because YG was saying that he put on the mixtape from, he put on, I think, uh, CTE mm-hmm. versus the world. I forgot the name of the tape exactly. But he put on the mixtape, the mix this from the viral, the song went viral. And then the, the label still didn't believe all the way. So YG, Mustard, and Jeezy all put up their own money to go shoot the video. Uh, and then they shot the video themselves. You know, Rich Homie Kwan, he had the song some type of way at the time. So it would like fit really perfect. And it, it was just like a, 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 a belief of faith. And finally, like the song was blown up, the video was already paid for, and everything was like successful. So I know after the song and the video came out, it was just like a tipping point. And then it was just like it was it was no stopping us then because we mm-hmm. felt like we had our back against the wall and everybody just chipped in and believed in that song. And from there, like, you know, then he they got our boy from Toronto, he jumped in at that point. That's why we knew he was doing something right. Uh oh yeah. You gotta tell Drizzy. that story. How that came about getting the feature on there. Oh yeah, no, nah, Drake, um, you know, I met Drake like a long time ago when he was out, like when he had moved out here, like like when he first um, signed to Young Money, I think. Like I met him at Roscoe's in Hollywood. He was at a table eating with his people. I'm like at the next table, like with my family and shit eating. You feel me? So he, uh, like we had a conversation back then. He was like, bro, I fuck with your shit. You feel me? I've been hearing your shit from like MySpace days. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so like I had, you know what I'm saying? We started like building a relationship from back then. So. And then like, like as his shit got bigger, you know, he was always like, bro, we gonna like do something one day type shit. So then um, the Who Do You Love beat, like we had the beat and we knew like the beat was like, we like, yeah, this one of them. And like, like at the time, you feel me? I don't know how many songs we like wrote and had niggas working on on that beat. But like, you know what I'm saying? We was like trying to figure that beat out. Because sometimes it'd be like, you know what I'm saying? I'd be hearing beats that I know it's like got hit potential, but like I can't figure that motherfucker out. And Who Do You Love was one of them beats and shit. So we like had like writers trying to do hooks and shit. We had Tory Lanez did a hook on that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and like we was just like, nah, like, you know what I'm saying? This ain't, nah, this ain't it. So then I sent, you feel me? I'm like, man, I'm finna send this shit to Drake. So I sent the beat to that nigga like, hey bro, you feel me, this one, like, fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he heard the beat, he like, he like, like I was telling him to put a hook on it, like a hook in the verse, mm-hmm. you feel me? But he was like, he was like, nah bro, like, you know what I'm saying, this your song, this your record, I think you should do the hook, you know what I'm saying? Cause 
Like, I'm not trying to overpower your record type shit. So I'm like, man, I need that drink. <laughs> that drink <laughs> gonna be out of here. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, no, nah, I respect that though, for sure. So, you know, we had to go sit back down and figure it out. And like, we was like working on that motherfucker for like a month. And right. then um, we came back out here and shit, we was at that studio. Winmark. At Winmark Santa Monica. and fucking Sycamore. Like I did like three songs to that beat. And like, we are sit and be like, nah, this ain't it. We are sitting, nah, this ain't it. And then one day we came with that Hootie Love shit. And Sick was like, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I put the verse up on there. We sent that shit off, you know what I'm saying? Drake, you know what I'm saying? He tapped in like, yeah, this shit go. Hmm. And he sent this shit back and that was that. But you know what I'm saying? That song was probably like, like the song off the album that we like took the longest to finish to figure out. Why were you so determined to record on that record? Because the beat, like these niggas would, would not let me not do that beat. Like him and Mustard was on me about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Anger, that's why they knew it. Yeah. Yeah, we knew that we knew that beat was gonna be out of here and then and it turned out to be a crazy, crazy song. That changed our lives, you know? Cause yeah. it was like, cause you know, I, we weren't even thinking about like beating my nigga at the time. Mm. Like, we were just happy to be there. Cause <laughs> <laughs> after after we left, I remember leaving Atlanta. I, I, I was so sad when we left Atlanta because I was I was having such a good time. That was probably one of the best experiences of my life. Cause I didn't even leave Atlanta. Like I didn't go back to LA. I didn't go to New York. <laughs> I stayed in Atlanta for eight weeks, solid. No plane ride, no nothing. I would just go straight on the program. All I would do all day is watch movies and try to bring it up to the uh, to the studio. You know, like stuff that I learned and watching movies. And we were so sad. And I remember um, Jeezy, I think Jeezy hooked up the play where uh, YG went on tour with Yo Gotti. And then the song was getting so big that at the end of the night of the tour, like Yo Gotti would bring YG back out just yeah. to perform my nigga every yeah, single night. Yeah. So it was like a campaign, like we had the West Coast, then we got like the South, you know? And then I think New York was fucking with everything. They was fucking with the slang, like the blood talk, everything going on. And just at that point we had like the like the whole country. And then it was just, uh, the last person, last people we had to convince was like the label. <laughs> <laughs> they still won't convince. The, la the last motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm over here fighting the, the whole label to the point where like nobody's even talking to me because I'm going so hard. Because they're like, yo, the album got to come out in December. And we're like, nah, we need mixed by Ali to mix the record. And I forgot who to see. The guy's name was like Barry Weiss. He, was, he went in there yelling at me one day like, nobody care about who mixed the album. They don't look back at Thriller and say who mixed the album. Just get the album done. And I was like, nah. That is. <laughs> no. I, I, was, I was ready. I was ready to get thrown in the street for that, for that mix, you know. And yeah. shout out to Ali. You yeah. know, I was like, it was worth it because we we went and they listened, you know, they were mean to us about it, but they listened. Cause they're like, we gotta peak. The song is peaking, they gotta drop it, whatever they were talking about. We're like, nah, we need the music to be perfect. So we came back um to Cali. We went to Santa Monica to Interscope Studios. I forgot what the name of it. No excuses. Was no it? excuses, yeah. No excuses. And we finally got with Ali and we stayed about two, three weeks in there. And that was like a lot of, it was like a, a, a crazy time, just like pretty much sleeping in there, going every day. We'd be in there for about 18 hours. Um, who was uh, James Hunt? Was his assistant? Mm -hmm. Was in there. Um, uh, who else was in there? Punch was in a lot of those sessions. Shout out to Punch. Punch is, uh, you know, he was yeah, just being Punch like a, was in there, <laughs> yep. Shout out to Punch. Cause I think, um, oh, just a big part about, I forgot why we stayed in Atlanta before I get there. Shout out to Kendrick, cause, um, I remember YG and Kendrick was talking and I think you sent them the whole album, right? Just to uh to listen yep, to. Yeah, we had the album. Yeah. And I, he got he could have picked any song to jump on on the whole album and yeah. he picked the uh, Really Be, which was really cool it because was that was that was like the most experimental song, mm -hmm. but it was also like the most controversial song like like to the homies, you know what I mean? Because they were like, oh, "I don't know about this song. It's like a little you're doing a new voice." Yeah. So when <laughs> so when Kendrick jumped on it, it was like validated, like, "Oh no, like you see, like I'm doing something right." This yeah. album seemed heavily influenced by like Doggy Style. Is Do that something that you guys were like looking into when you were making the album? Yeah, like 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 Doggy Style, like Sick had gave me like a um like a list of albums. You know what I'm saying? And go listen to like like when I was getting into the, I'm finna go record an album um, type type shit, right? And Doggy Style was definitely one of them albums. You know, I grew up off that shit. But it was multiple albums. It was Doggy Style, 50 Cent, Get Richard Die Trying. We was off of Tupac. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, All Eyes on Me. You know what I'm saying? We was off of Biggie, both of the Biggie albums, Ready to Die, Life After Death. You know, I was off my Wayne shit. You know what I'm saying? I was just listening to all the classic albums that, you know what I'm saying, we grew up on. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That was like, that, that was like, had like storylines or had like big records, like cultural, like, like records, you know what I'm saying? Um, we was listening to all that shit and like we even go in the in the studio while working on the album, depending on what shit we work on, we'll go pull some shit up from off one of the albums, you know what I'm saying, and really dissect that shit. Oh, and we was off of the fucking, the fucking Eminem, the oh, Marshall, Marshall Mathers, Mathers LP. LP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a motherfucker, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. T, was it you that brought in DJ Quick to like help assist, or was that like, who made that call? Nuh-uh. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, nah, we wanted Quick, you know what I'm saying, me and Quick from the same hood and shit, so, and Quick is known for like his ear, you know what I'm saying, with like mixing music and shit. So, um, we wanted Quick to mix my nigga, mm-hmm. just, just for the story, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like the story, like, yeah. That's dope, and he, every chance he get, like, this one right here, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. put my hand on this one, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he knew it was a joint. <laughs> now. Being from the West Coast, and then y'all spent eight weeks in Atlanta. Was it like a game, sh- like a mind shift to be like, I'm we in Atlanta and trying to make West Coast music? Did that like fuck with y'all? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> nah, we had our little, like we had our bubble, we had our vibe going. Yeah. yeah. Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta, a great place, man. Like Atlanta don't judge. You know, whatever you want, Atlanta could do. If you went to Atlanta and you want to make a Hawaiian album, they'll do it with you as long as you yeah. like fuck with the city. They just care that you like, you going out. You know, you go to strip clubs, you, hookah, you show some love. <laughs> yeah, you got to be outside. You, yeah. you got to listen to their producers. Like, you know what I mean? That's what that's really what Atlanta care about. They just care that you not using their resources. They they care about that you're there for the culture. And I think Atlanta just rock with you. Atlanta is just a beautiful place. Like, I'd work in Atlanta anytime. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And Jeezy really, all you know, he he has a long history of, like, fucking with, with L.A. Mm-hmm. He got a long history of that. You know, that, that's, that's my boy. So he, he got a long, so it was... It was easy, like to just maintain who you are in this environment, you know, because everybody in the room, everybody leaders though, like so, mm-hmm. you know, we we just out here to get away, breathe the air, share some energy, focus, and focus, you I know, can. yeah, yeah, we we not here to take nothing, just here to give love. And when we came back mixing the album, we just that was like the last bit of uh, features. I remember because uh, we we came back with Kendrick, we came back with like Tory, Todd did everything. I think the last person we want on the album is a rest in peace. We want to nip, and I just want to party. Oh yeah, and we we was damn near ready to hold up the album just for that, you know. Yeah. That would have been that would have been dope too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, I remember that shit. <laughs> I remember that. And then uh, one time, I think we was recording out of like No Excuses, which was basically like TDE Studios at the time. And uh, I think Schoolboy uh, has, was listening to the album. Yeah. And he just saw it, saw it had an open verse. So he was like, fuck it, if you got something for it. He went crazy, too. Yeah, yeah and that's how uh, Schoolboy and J-Rock got ended up getting on the album. They they brought some monster verses on there. Yeah. Speaking of J-Rock and Schoolboy Q, got a video I want to show you. Hey, yo, what it do? Man, my favorite memory on being part of the album is when YG had me change my original verse to I Just Want to Party. I remember him telling me, like, man, I want you to get off how Schoolboy Q got off. I was like, all right, you sure? So I got off. I remember this nigga sending me a video like four in the morning of a party. Everybody turned up to my verse. So yeah, I made the right decision on changing the mm-hmm. verse, man. Shout out to my brother YG. You already know how it's going, man. Love you, brother. Love, hey. nigga, bloods. Hey. <laughs> hey. Nigga off a body on. Schoolboy Q came off so hard. You know what I'm saying? Like I just felt like, like the, like the learning experience I had, you know what I'm saying, on working on the album, like you, like I was like able to sit and point out reasons that we thought like songs got turned into anthems. It was because like the structure of songs mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying, when certain parts of the songs got repeated type shit. You feel me? So I was fresh, like, you know what I'm saying? I was in that like space, you know what I'm saying? So when I heard, the J Rock verse, I'm thinking in my head, like, how we make this shit an anthem? Schoolboy Q came off crazy. 
we from like where we from, you know what I'm saying? It's gangbang capital. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, niggas is a love that if we just repeat that and he banging his hood, he banging his hood. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna make it like an anthem. So um yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? I hit bro and I was like, man, you know, like not like that, but like, but like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It and, made uh, sense though. Yeah, no, that shit made sense, you know? Because everything was like a concept, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it wasn't about being good or bad, just everything that was the best for the song, you know? And that's what T said earlier, like, you know, the song uh, dictated everything. You know, YG had multiple verses for my nigga. He had different parts and like, we had like 17 yeah. hooks for Who Do You Love? Like, there was a lot of songs that we did rewrote and did everything too. It was a lot, you know? Even when we got back, I think the first thing we did was uh, shoot a video for Left Right. If you look back at the video, it's like YG Mustard and Jeezy on uh, on top of Roscoe's, I think. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shooting that video. I remember I remember that day so vividly because that was like my birthday. It was like this, uh, two days before Christmas. And I was like, the last thing I did, and I think the next day, uh, Christmas Eve, I flew back home to see my family. So it was like, um, it was just, it was just, we was all in, you know? We was working all the, we was like, it was nothing more important in our lives just to see that album all the way through. I, I want to add to that too with with Schoolboy Q because I I remember the night at Interscope when Schoolboy Q first came into the room to hear the album before he did the verse, and I remember him just sitting down. I remember telling him like, because I had already I had been around him. I remember saying, man, these niggas wild, man. These niggas, <laughs> niggas game banging. <laughs> these niggas go. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a gang of niggas in that little ass room, nigga. You niggas gonna be. He like. Go. So he go in that room, it's Ali on that board, the same board that Dr. Dre mixed all the Eminem shit on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when Wadi started playing the album, I forgot what song, I don't want to misquote the song, but I just remember. Now this, let me paint, put that, this studio had to be about this room. Small as shit. You say 100 square feet? Or Probably. Like, you know, something like that. And there's at least about 20 people in this room and it's a little, it's a little, uh, island on the wall that all this at least seven hundred thousand dollars of recording equipment is on so i remember why uh schoolboy q sitting on the couch i'm sitting on a little the arm of the couch and why is he body come in why you so 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 you know and why do you press play right when he pressed play i don't know how he did it keep in mind it's a little ass studio remember i told you that island with the six hundred thousand dollars of equipment why mm-hmm. he hops on the island now he get he get he doing his thing. The album Q is like in the room. I'm seeing the whole, I'm seeing like them showing the movement of what this is about in real time. And I'm seeing and I'm just I'm like, you see this shit? That's supposed to be filming. I'm, I'm like, you see this shit? And, and Q like, I like these niggas. <laughs> like, and I was like, I told you that. It's like, it's, you know, because I, I didn't lick it at this point. I no longer looked at this shit like hood huh, shit. This shit was like, I'm looking at real, I'm looking at the black Axl Rose be born. I'm looking at a real, the highest level of black art rock and roll ever being born right now. So I'm looking at it from like, oh my God. Like I know him too, but when he hopping, when he hopping the thing, I'm looking at him too. Just like, <laughs> damn, this shit do look, this shit. I, I'm in this shit. I'm saying, oh my God, I'm so happy I stay solid. I'm finally part of some real, another classic. Mm-hmm. And then, you know. You went crazy. I mean, I just, so when, the, it's, I feel like, I mean, Q's a passionate artist anyway. You're very articulate, very smart dude. And that verse, you could just hear not only the passion for his section, yeah. the passion for him, but you could hear the respect and love for YG in that album. And I could hear him sitting in that room on that verse. I could hear that offering. Yeah. Do that. That's that nigga sincere. Did it. You opened up the door. Yeah, man. But, I saw no, that nigga that. cute. That nigga cute was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that shit was not, I, I still ain't been a part of it. I've been a part of some real life changing moments. But that's one of my top five scenes. Mm-hmm. Like, really, because you know, when you in these albums, you just feel it. You get to like, see it in That's real what time. He, do? he been knowing to do that though. Cause we hopped on, on I never forget. 
And I was saying, why is that? You know, you gotta give some fuck. Nigga, Dre rule. You, you gotta give some fuck. Like, God damn. But he didn't, he didn't give a fuck and he hopped on that shit. And it, it was like real rock star shit. And it was like him looking at you in the eyes while the verses come on, the music. It was real rock star shit. That's what I remember. You feel me? Yeah. I remember that feeling. How did the track list come together? It's, if you listen to the album, it's a story. It's like a day in the life. You know, if like BPT, it's your, his mom, uh, you know, that's his real mom on there, like screaming at him. You know what I'm saying? And then he gets put on and he's he just wants to party. And, you know, he's partying with left, right. And, you know, he's chilling, big and back, being bull, meet the flockers, you know, chilling with the homies on my nigga, do it to you. Got the girl, hanging with the girl. Who do you love? Peaks starts tripping a little bit, would really be. 1 a.m., remember, we started in the morning, so now we at 1 a.m. The thank God in a little, it's kind of like that atonement moment. And the sorry, mama, because it starts with your mom at the beginning. So if you play the album, it just all makes sense. Fucking yeah, movies. it's it's like it started with me getting put on top of the day. You know what I'm saying? And then from the put on, you know how it go. When I got put on, it was like at the hood day. You feel me? So it's a party. Like, we functioning all day. So it go... Me getting put on, and then we partying, and then we end up going to do some shit. We go slide, we go rob some shit. You know what I'm saying? Boom, we rob some shit, we pass. I'm riding for my motherfucking niggas and all that. Now I'm fucking with my bitch. I'm going through this shit with my bitch. And then it's nighttime now. You know what I'm saying? The homie called me. We go rob some shit again. <laughs> then I get caught. And now I'm in jail, like my mama said at the top of the thing. So I'm like, damn, my mama was right. I'm sorry, mama. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We do have a segment on this show called More or Less. And it's sponsored by Price Pick, by the way. It's simple. So I'll ask you questions where it's more or less. So let's just say, for example, I'll say um, ice water. Yeah, we want more ice water or less ice water. So that's all you have to do is just say more or less for any question that I ask you. It's kind of rapid fire. So, But if you want to explain your question, the answer, I mean, just feel free. So the first, more or less, I'm going to go one person at a time, so feel free. More or less, Ghost Riders. Oh, uh, more or less, go. I guess less. I can't answer. I can't go on it. Yeah, you want more people to write their music? Is what you're saying? Yeah, I want more people to write their, their music just because I feel like it needs to be more personal. The more the, better, the more personal a song is, the better it is. I'm not against the If you're making pop music, I don't care if you have... Ghost Riders, but if you're making music that's kind of personal to you, is is you're gonna get a better song when it's from you. Ghost Riders, more or less. Like like Six said, if 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 it's pop music, where it's not about you know, I, I wouldn't say not about where most of it are other people's songs, and, mm. and whatever. But if it's a real, if it's if it's some real art stuff digging out your soul, can't nobody write your story. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. So. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm with the bros. You ain't even gotta ask me what they said. <laughs> Sick, more or less live instrumentals. Live, like like instruments. Like and stuff? instruments and stuff, like just live. Yeah, right? live instruments. It's gonna get originality. You know, I think more music is rising to the top. Right now, like a lot of kids are going to computers mm -hmm. and you start seeing a shift between the have and the have nots musically. The people who are investing into the music are starting to hit another uh, stratosphere. Mm -hmm. And the people who aren't investing into music are going out the game faster. Like, I've been noticing now, you got about 18 months with one style before they expect you to switch it up. And if you're not, if you didn't really take all the, because there's more money in the game now than ever. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't take that money and invest into instruments and music, you could be out the game faster than ever. You know what I mean? So. This, you always got to invest back in the music, so definitely more. More or less, T. I know already. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, you know I already saying? know well, already. I already more, know already. You know more. For one, it, I mean, it, it doesn't do anything but benefit the, the time span of a composition. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it really stretches out the life of a song. And not, not only that, but it's like when you think about the biggest records in the world, I'm, I'm not talking about your, I'm not talking about the, the six weeks. I'm, I'm talking about copyrights, bro, records. You know, one of the fundamental things is, is, is a baseline with a true hit record. Mm -hmm. A baseline is a real thing. Certain, and you can't, a, a great song will never go nowhere with a good structure of a bridge and certain things. Those, these things just, 
these are just national hit record things that you got to do, you know? And the live instruments are very, very important, you know? Single-handedly, I, I, seen, I seen YG. I seen My Crazy Life and Good Kid Mad City tremendously turn the value around to live musicians. Tremendously. From 1500 to everybody else in LA played instruments, to myself, those instruments, because every time I play keyboard on a hit record, like if I'm playing keyboard on, on Who Do You Love, I'm playing Under Must or whatever he's playing, that now, when that song has to be played live, that now provides a job for a keyboard player. Mm. When I play saxophone on a mama song or 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 uh, we gonna be all right, that provides an opening and a job for that musician and young kids to want to see what that what is that. So it's like these two cats are single handedly responsible for sure for this generation being an incline with live instruments on records. And I, you know, I'm I'm one of the only that could say that. Cause don't nobody do what I do. So it's either me or you got my bro Alan Ritter. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Alan. Shout out to Alan, but we could count. I could stop there with the bad motherfuckers that do it, that really take a record to the finish line. So, but I seen a lot of other crews start having musicians on records. Mm -hmm. And every time I go, they say, Man, when you was doing my crazy life, man, was it like 20 musicians in the room? Mm -hmm. I'd be like, they weren't musicians. You are the 20 musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, <laughs> it was 20 <laughs> people. They, they, yeah. they weren't musicians. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You fuck with the YG more or less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 I fuck with it for sure. Like, from, like, with, I seen live instruments do, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with it, you know? So we finna, um, at the end of every album, well, not even at the end, but like that's like a stage for like every project I do. You know what I'm saying? I start off with whatever I start off with. You know what I'm saying? And then at the end, it's live instrument time. Mm -hmm. Come on, we gonna we gonna strip this motherfucking beat down. You gonna add some live instruments, mm -hmm. and then we gonna put that shit together. Like you know what I'm saying, and make it sound the best. And the My Crazy Life tour. Mm. Oh yeah. Come oh, on yeah. now, because that's 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 really part of the album. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Nigga was on a tour the same too. Crew same on crew. The road. Yeah. How many times you get the same crew on the road? Yeah. That's never that never that's happens. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Mustard sick. Me, it's the same record crew. <laughs> I, I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie, like I, I'm, I was born in Trinidad, but I must have left the country maybe like once or twice. That was the first time I ever been to Europe. I Crazy. Went, we went to about. I think like 19 cities in 18 days or something like that. We saw like the whole world. Yeah. That was crazy for me. That was, yeah, that yeah. was changing my whole perspective on life. Yeah. Traveling does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Traveling does for sure. More or less mixtapes. More mixtapes. You know what? Mixtapes, to go back to a story that T said earlier, when I went to Diamond Bar when I was 18 to go to, to, go to Snoop's house, he was playing video games and I was just kind of like behind him for like, it felt like an hour. And after the game came, if it was done, he... He came up to me and said, like, he said, yo, cuz, what's the difference between like an album and a mixtape? Well, how do you make mixtapes? Like, mm. that's what he said. And I said, mixtape is just like an album, but you don't have to clear anything and you don't got to make no singles. You know what I'm saying? You can just do whatever you want. And he ain't asked no follow up questions. We just started rocking from there. He liked the answer and it was just gone. So I think there's more mixtapes give you freedom. It's too much pressure now that everything got to be cleared, everything got to be put mm. out. I just think. That's what artists just need to be able to put out their stuff without no problems. They don't everything don't have to be like metrics and what's going on. I think mixtapes gives you like a just gives you freedom. More or less mixtapes. More mixtapes. My whole career is based based off mixtapes. I was on so many mixtapes, like by even, you know, by the time I got to sick and snoop, I, I had already kind of been a thing through South Central, Watson Compton, like with the homies that had studios and all these places, like and not, I used to spend so much time over in the main streets at this this dude named Del Dog's house. He had a studio. Oh, yeah, I know Del Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah, he had a studio on the back with 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 DJ Slip. So Battle Cat would take me over there. You know, and, and this is off of Man. You open that big gate, mm -hmm. Phantoms. You they was know, having they, they having their way. Having their way. It's like mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying, I'm like, and he had the studio, and he just used to be like, man, do beats and. 
So I do beats over there, all through everything. But then, you know, so by the time my guy was sick and really we got hit the mixtape, because that's not really a West Coast thing like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sick exposed to that. Like I said, without those mixtapes, I would have had to stand in line a lot longer because Snoop had Battle Cat, Fred Reg, at this time, Fred Reg, Battle Cat, Jelly Roll, High Tech, uh, Pharrell. He had everybody, he, whoever he wanted, you know, right. but nobody was doing the mixtape mix beats because they weren't getting paid. <laughs> I said, I'll do all of them. So without mixtapes, man, I, I wouldn't be able like, to feed my children today. YG, more or less? More. More more mixtapes. I got one. I got one on the way. Just with that three is on the way. Mm -hmm. I for sure feel like we need more mixtapes. I think once like um SoundCloud came, right. they kind of converted that to the version of mixtapes, mm -hmm. but it's nothing like I remember like having to go search somewhere like, man, they got a mixtape. And between Wayne and Gucci, it was like hey, I had some new to listen to every damn yeah. week. And without no need to, like you said, no need to clear it. So I didn't answer no more or less questions, but more mixtapes. Yeah. No, but I think like mixtapes these days. Like you still gonna have to go through the clearing process because yeah. the platform that we put them out on shit gotta get clear. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what level you are. Like if you like, yeah, a, if you're a new artist, like I, I'm working with this artist in New York, and he was about to sign. He's like, "Sick, I want to put out some of these songs," and I'm like, "Well, how much of them got samples in it?" He's like, "All of them." I like, I'll put them all out, and then whatever go up, we'll clear that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, see, yeah, 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 yeah. But for like. For motherfuckers who in a game who already been popped off, it's hard like doing a like a mixtape because it's like we can't just put it out on Spotify and you know what I'm they saying on all the money, platforms. That's why. <laughs> you can go put it on YouTube and that's it and like a SoundCloud. But I think you gotta get shit clear now. So on SoundCloud. not really. You can still uh, put it. You can put it out on SoundCloud. But I feel you though. It's like at this point when you reach a certain point in your career, it's too valuable. It's like yeah, you know, valuable. like if you like Giannis, you probably not gonna go to the Rucker. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, but, but when I say mixtapes, like now for me, like mixtape for me is just like, like no deep concept, go and have fun right. and make some good music, but it ain't no pressure. It ain't no critical thinking. Mm -hmm. It's like, no nigga, I'm having fun and we turned up and we doing whatever we doing. So when I say mixtape right now and like where I'm at, that's what I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because when I get into the albums mode, you know, I came into the game with these motherfuckers, so when I get into album mode, <laughs> nigga. It's a different feeling. It's nigga, <laughs> nigga, it get deep, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga be up here with it, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. Yeah, that's dope, man. I appreciate y'all for playing more or less, but let's get back to the album. Mm -hmm. So, what's each one of you guys' favorite song off the album? BPT. I mean, for, right? So it got this, the album records and then the hit records. My my favorite album record is BPT. My favorite hit record, it's my nigga, cause it set it all off. You know. Mm -hmm. Mine is uh. That's it's so hard. It's hard, but but mine is um. Sorry, mama. Because for one, I, we, I mean, I, I, I love my mama. And I, I know he loves his mama. mama. We, we love mama. But I, uh, the night you, you brought in your family to hear Sorry, Mama. Oh, yeah. Your folks made chicken and cookies and everything. Yeah. And it was, in Hennessy, it was just like, <laughs> right? Because we had been eating out every night. And I was like, yo, these chicken's amazing. But his family's there, pops, everybody there, like. Energy, great. That, every, just that family energy, and they they hearing him, you know. Sorry, mama. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ty coming in singing. You know, I'm thinking about. You know what? Also, uh, I remember songs like "Sorry, Mama." Really, be. I remember he's having different music to him. Yeah. Different versions, all this different stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm looking, this is my first time even reading reading this stuff since we did it. You know, meet the. I remember hearing meet the flockers like. Man, you gonna give up the recipe? <laughs> that's real LA. That's, that's real like, LA shit. I remember you were saying that. I was like, you gonna give up the recipe? <laughs> you feel me? And we had, um, you know, you know, man, I'm gonna be selfish. Can I say one more song? You can say one more. I'll let you say Please. one more. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, mama. And where's the one with Ty, brother? Oh, Free TC. Uh, uh, what's it called? Right there, Big TC. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's called 
thank God. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, thank God. Mm -hmm. That's innovative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, Taj Brothers is so talented. Been mm -hmm. talented forever. He just talented. And this brother, at this time of recording this, and still, I mean, still, but what, what, like, this is a this this is an incarcerated brother, like, still singing songs about joy and thanking God. Just still, and he he, you know, when I first heard this, it was on YouTube or something, or I think he somebody sent me something. Yeah, we was playing it. Yeah, we found it on YouTube. Yeah, playing it, but then it's like. We had this idea to add this to it, and, and it was just like it was innovative to like take because that's a real culture thing too. What he's mm -hmm. doing, yeah, that's a real thing. Like you know, that's that's another level of talent. That's a, that's a real mm -hmm. whole another level of talent. thing. You know what I'm saying? And I remember just hearing that and being like, "Yo, that is like you know, that's innovative. That's different. I like it different. I yeah. don't like following the leader and all that mm -hmm. shit. That shit was like some leading." Things. And it brought light. It brought it brought light to bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. And uh, everybody got a person like that. Everybody got a person got a connection. Like that. Got a connection for sure for that. And that even helped the the Ty Dollar Sign album Free TC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so everything was working together. But that that uh, that song was very and it, that's such an unselfish move for artists. Mm -hmm. Seriously. I mean, on a mean, debut album at that. I mean, read the credits. Mm -hmm. It's Big TC and RJ. Mm -hmm. This is this is his album, so this move reminded me of the first song of Doggy Style when Rage come in yeah. busting, and it's mm -hmm. all rage. You feel me? It's like here, cause he, I got so much. Let me give you something. Mm -hmm. But that's his spirit, you know. And that that's 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 solid, man. You can't find so many solid artists that even get that look. He ain't thinking about it like that, but that's what the fuck it is. Yeah, that's what it is. When you get to them offices mm -hmm. and them buildings, like. Yeah, this is cool, but who the fuck is this dude? Because now you gotta go find out. And he likes yeah. he, they with me. So mm -hmm. it's not hard to turn in an album with, you know, they gave you a certain amount of things, the all-star cast, and then you turn in anything with somebody that they gotta look up. I feel mm -hmm. like it's tricky. But that's how much they, you know, he was talking to them people. I didn't even see the people. That's how I know he held it. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> see them. He protected us so cold. Mm -hmm. We didn't even see them. Mm -hmm. I still don't know the other. Who was his names? He's the I'm not saying every every year I meet somebody at a, when I go to New York at a label. A, hey man, I, I was the guy that I was the elbow guy on my crazy life. <laughs> like, yeah, remember we talked? And I'm like, man, we just drunk so much. We always talk to everybody during this album. But yeah, that. But anyway, those are those are mine. That's dope. I think my favorite song is BPT. Because that was the closest one to uh, Bompton. Mm -hmm. And that was like the goal when we started. And my personal favorite YG is like aggressive pressing YG. So like <laughs> Bompton, BPT, been from the gang. Like I just, that's my favorite version of YG. When mm -hmm. YG is just like, like on you, like aggressive, mm -hmm. like that's like, okay, cool. This is like the beat, it just gets real dangerous. When the beat sound like, oh, I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm in the wrong shit. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> yeah. and that's what all them songs sound like to me. Bumped in BPT, been from the gang. It's just like, I could listen to a whole tape of that. I remember when YG was talking about albums I put them on, so they put me on all kind of music like uh, B Brazy, uh, oh, yeah, bang back. yeah, banging on wax, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. So like, kind of like where it all kind of started from. Cause Top okay, was in one of those groups, bag. right? Oh, he worked with him? Yeah, he worked with him, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, I, I wanted to make sure like we didn't run from the essence of that on the album. And I felt like we got it right from the door. Man, remember you had the the the, the notepad? Yeah. The oh, book yeah. with all the, the cold book. Yeah, with the notepad. The I, I got hundreds of niggas sick. Cold, man. I don't do an album without that notepad. Only he can <laughs> read the shit, though. <laughs> <laughs> Only he can read this. I'll be like, oh, he, he want to make sure nobody going to take this <laughs> That whole, you know, I, I write everything on the album, everything we do, everything we record to keep dude. it on a notepad, no iPad, no nothing, just there. Wow. You know what? And that reason I put it in a, in a notepad though is because sometimes it's just like you don't want the information to get out somehow mm -hmm. or whatever. I feel like it was just written down. An artist is going to trust it. You know what I mean? And, and when I write stuff down and read it, it stick. Yeah. Or in my mind. And it, yeah. Word up. I, I don't do no album without a notepad. I, I'm, I'm sure if I go on my storage, I can still find the My Crazy Life book. My favorite song on the album is um, I Just Want to Party. Okay. Because yeah. I seen what it did in a party. It, it's kind of like, it's one of them ones that come on, it might fuck around. Yeah. It might fuck yeah. around and get like that because yeah, no, it's sure. so many different hoods on it. It's just, it's like one of them ones that come on right now. 
it go up. It's going up. Hey, man, y'all got me going up, man. I want to, man, man, we got to do another class. Up, man. Y'all got to get back in. For sure, got to mm-hmm. get back in. Hey, hey, I, I knew. So that song is special because the only other response I heard that uh, years ago, right before DJ Quick got big, he had a, he had a mixtape called The Red Tape, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where he's saying, he's saying a lot of disrespectful things to the whole crib culture, right? Mm-hmm. But years years later, I started working with Quick and uh, uh, some friends that I grew up with. Like, Man, we really want to meet Quick. I was like, I don't know. I don't want y'all around <laughs> Quick. Mm-hmm. It's not. Nah, it's, it's, he's Quick is fine. Me and him are working doing music, and and one one of my G homies really was like, Cuz, we need to see Quick. He changed our life. We was breaking in the nigga's car, still in the red tape, knowing he was dissing. It was so mm-hmm. banging. We just whoever wasn't listening to that was that that nigga. So I, I bought real ones in to me, quick. and this is quick than been through a lot mm. with this, but with, with the certain area with his past and everything. And he was hesitant at first. I remember saying, "Man, that they just want to say thank you." He like, <laughs> you know, everybody, you know, these the ones. And mm. I when I bought them in, man, they that was we was like, they said, "Man," they started telling stories, man. Man, we hung a nigga upside down, shaking him for this tape. Like it was these is people that ain't supposed to be talking to these type of things, but that music brought that thing together. So twenty some years later, you hear this. I mean, this is like this is intense. It's Crips that sing BPG. Oh, it's mm-hmm. no, it's for no, no it's question. For, no, it's, that, that come on, they singing that. No, it's for mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 a real thing. But that's that's what he. Remember, I told you <laughs> that's when good. I first heard about the nigga. It was because. My homeboy went to a function and he said, nigga, I've seen gangsters, hustlers, all powwowing, hanging out, loving each other, and ready to trip on anyone other than themselves. Speaking of like having all these gangs around, when we did start, we used to have literally Everybody. She was scared to me. Everybody. She was scared. And one of our main friends, we, we chill was like the Hoovers. I got I got one right now, a video I want to show y'all. Um, just another video for sure that y'all gonna love. YG, hey, my nigga Q. Decade of greatness, my boy. A decade. Um, literally a classic. My crazy life. One of the greatest things that ever come out the West. One of the greatest albums. Period. I mean, top to bottom. Like literally top to bottom, bro. Um, thank you for having me a part of it. Um, they told me I had 30 seconds only. I, I can say so much, bro. Real talk. You deserve everything, bro. You got. Um, keep shining. Um, love you, fool. Keep, keep, keep killing it, bro. Um, decade of greatness, bro. And you really been doing it longer than that. To keep it, a, keep it a stack. So. Love Peace my nigga Q, you, bro. Love you, bro. Yeah, Hoover dope, Street. Man. Yeah, yeah. And I like to see Q his growth too. I can't wait to hear. His yeah, growth. shout out to yeah. Q though. His album just had, you know, what I'm saying, ten, no, his ten year anniversary too. Oh, that's Q, right. Oxymoron was yeah, like no, some is. weeks ago. Yeah, so shout out to Q and shout shit. I hit him. Shout out to yeah. Q for sure. And Corrupt was on that. Oh yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big deal. It was. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Shout out to Q for sure. I see y'all, you, you kind of said it already, but I want to get the answer now. Will we ever see y'all lock back in and get another great album? De- definitely. For I, sure. Like, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We done had conversations yeah. already, like. Yeah, yeah I think sure. we, right, we all right there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think it's now we're at the point in our careers that like, we have like freedom to do what we want. Mm-hmm. So I feel like now is a good time. Yeah. Everybody got families. Everybody in the right mental state. I think it'd be crazy to lock back in there for real. Yeah. Like just and then I can really do like you said the freedom of just being like let's go to Atlanta for eight weeks, yeah. mm-hmm. make an album, lock back in. This was really one of my favorite episodes for sure. It was incredible to sit down with three great minds. I appreciate y'all for stopping by the red couch. Is it anything y'all want to get off y'all chest before we leave? I'm gonna gotta. I gotta. You know I got the. Uh, <laughs> I got the cherry bombs. I want to make sure. Here, Terrence. I'm, I'm taking them. I'm taking all the mm-hmm. tables, man. Uh, six. Six, six. Yeah, you know, and it's like it's just like it's a it's an all natural. You know what I'm saying? Pill for the bros. You know, if you want to go and make sure you do your thing and go crazy on some shit, 
Yeah. That's the I want to go crazy tonight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The bro code. The cherry bomb way. <laughs> the cherry bomb way. Come on. Cherry bomb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to use that use for that. ad. <laughs> 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 You know, T could do a jingle. You know what I'm saying? No, man. Hey, appreciate y'all niggas for pulling up, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, I, I flew in town for this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm leaving in th- three hours. Oh, oh shit. That's dope, man. Yeah. Appreciate Love, you. bro. I'm, I want to shout out a bunch of people that well, I didn't get a chance to shout out. I want to shout out B Moore. Uh, you know what I mean? He was a big part of the project. Uh, yeah. Russ. Uh, big Russ, shout out to yeah. Russ. Uh, Ra was there for a whole time. Yeah. Uh, gloves, around. shout out to gloves. You know what I mean. Gloves been in the mix a long time. He the was there. Who game. else? Who else is a part of this album? Uh, Rod. Big, big shout out to mustard, of course. Yeah, mustard for sure. Huge shout out to mustard. Yeah, uh, man. Um, who else was on? Uh, kind of uh, Rude Boy was around for a lot of the album. Yeah. R J. R J was around for a lot of the album. Ty. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of people who. Oh, my boy D, who engineered the whole oh, album. Oh, yeah, D Brown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? D Shout Brown. out D Brown. Yeah. Shout out D Brown. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, you feel me? He was yeah. every step of the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just want to shout out some of the people that I just know that was like, yeah. who was really in there with us. You know, of course, Jeezy, Carbon yeah. 15. Yeah. Uh, Jeezy, you know, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably forgetting some names, but those. was, was a lot of people. Steve-O, my bad. My boy Steve, Steve, Steve oh, Carlos. Yeah. Steve, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Steve-O. My boy Steve was part of it. I just wanna I'm gonna say muster name again though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say muster name again, man. I, I don't think we you can't say his name with you you can't say their names without it's like Snoop and Dre. Mm-hmm. But that, it's like you it's just, you know, even for him to even open up and just be down there. I mean, that's hard to do to be that's yeah. your boy, you doing music now. You got other people coming in. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. Yeah, it must have hates that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I only want to be in the studio with just us. Yeah, I only yeah. want to have all these niggas. Except mm-hmm. for y'all, though. Y'all yeah, yeah, is like, yeah, yeah, the, you know yeah, what I'm saying? This yeah. shit is golden right here. But yeah, yeah, nigga, yeah. anybody else, he be like, bro, we yeah, don't need them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when it's time to play ball, man, to get that record to the finish line, yeah. that boy is a professional. And he, and he gonna get it there. Mm-hmm. He gonna get it there. So just separately, once again, a must, man. Faji, I'm proud of you, man, and all your success. My crazy life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 10 year you. anniversary episode. Yeah. 10 years. 10 years. Man. All grind. 400. 400.